I've often wondered what other people's inspirations were for their channels, so I thought I'd share mine. Here at Yester Kitchen, was it a cooking show? Oh yeah. Was it from the 70s? Oh yeah. This man galloped his way into the hearts of so many people, including me, and did it all with a glass of wine. everyone, welcome to Yester Kitchen. If you love food, retro, and nostalgia, you are in the right place. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. We're gonna have some fun today because I'm gonna talk about the Galloping Gourmet. Graham Kerr, oh man, he was everything. He had a very short-lived but very, very famous cooking show from 1969 to 1971. Graham Kerr, he was good looking. He was charismatic. The man could cook. He had a fabulous English accent, and he was just a ball of energy. And he just took um, cooking shows by storm. There was really nothing like him before. He would actually come out, running out and leaping out into the audience, not into the audience, but come out from the audience, and he would just be bounding and leaping all over the set, and then he would settle down in this little den part of the set that he had. He would sit down, and he would always have a glass of wine, and he would tell some kind of funny story about a trip he took or a joke he had or something, and then he would put on his apron, go in the kitchen and cook these amazing dishes. So, I'm gonna celebrate Graham by drinking too. All right, so I was in Kernville, California last weekend and I found this and I just about fainted away. Let me see if I can show it to you. I'm gonna get in the camera. There we go. Graham Care, there he is, handsome as ever. The Galloping Gourmet Cookbook. This is from 1969 for his show and it's just chock full of absolute gold. And what I'm gonna make for you today is something called hot cracker crab. It's an appetizer, it's super easy. I'm gonna get started on it, and then I'll tell you all about the shell. So we're gonna start with a pan on a medium, medium high heat, and we are gonna add six tablespoons of butter. Ooh, there it goes. And while it starts melting, I'm gonna ask you if you've subscribed yet. If you haven't, now is a great time because I've got so much more for you. And if you have subscribed, thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. So we're gonna let this melt down, and I guess holding the handle would be helpful. So the Galloping Gourmet was filmed in front of a live audience, and they would show the audience a lot, and this audience dressed up. I mean, it was just, it was one of the first cooking shows that was considered entertainment. I mean, Julia Child, she had the market, and she is a classic, but Graham Kerr just kind of took it to another level. And, whoa, our butter's melting. So what we're gonna do, well before I do that, so, so he ended every show with running into the audience, grabbing one audience member, and bringing them to a table that he had all set up and they would eat whatever he made that day. If you have not seen The Galloping Gourmet, go find, they're right here on YouTube, go find some episodes. He's, he's just fabulous. And when I saw him as a very little girl, I thought, oh my God, I didn't, I didn't really understand. So he, was, he came in at the height of the sexual revolution. And so he would make, innuendos all the time that were right over my head, but everyone else got them. And I mean, now that I go back and I watch them, I mean, it was hysterical. Like he would be peeling a cucumber and making a comment about a circumcision. I mean, that's, and all while, you know, he was, he was just drinking the whole time and having the best time. So anyway, back to our pan. So we're going to add one stalk of celery. You want it really thinly sliced. And you want a quarter cup of shallots, which are also very thinly sliced. Take your time, do it right. And then you want a half a green pepper that is just chopped up super fine. And we're gonna stir that around for a few minutes. So you're gonna let these vegetables saute for just a little bit. They don't have to cook through because this is gonna go in the oven. So let me show you a couple pictures of Graham and his show. Take a look. He was, oh, look at that. He's just amazing, just absolutely amazing. I just, I was captivated. So many people were captivated. Of course, the critics hated him, but you know, what do critics know? They got it wrong on that, they got it wrong on that, and they got it wrong on the Galloping Gourmet, and I'm sure there's more, so go with what you like. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and add our next ingredient, which is our crab. You can use lump crab, or you can use the back fin. It, it already comes in a container. If you want to pick your own crab, go for it. I'm too lazy and I buy a container. All ready to go. You want 
one cup of crab. And in it goes. And by the way, you can get all my recipes on my website, yesterkitchen.com. And you can also sign up to get some of my favorite recipes. Okay, so we're just warming up the crab. You're not cooking this. Like I said, the oven is gonna do all of the work. So the reason the um, show is only for three years is because his, um, Graham's wife, Trina, produced the show. And in 1971, the two of them were riding in an RV and got in a horrible accident. They both recovered, but they were sustained some pretty serious injuries. And so the production had to halt. And then after that, Trina started having some health problems and they decided to just cut their losses. But we had three years of amazing, amazing show. Okay, so that's warm enough. Okay, so to this, you're gonna add three quarters cup of parsley, all chopped up, make it all pretty. And you're gonna add a teaspoon of salt. half a teaspoon of dry mustard. It's also called English mustard. You can also take mustard seeds and grind them yourself. However you want it, you want the yellow powder mustard. And then you want a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Give it a tiny bit of heat. And we're gonna mix that all around until that cayenne, actually I love the cayenne because it's red and you can really tell when it's all incorporated because it kind of, you know, the color, let the color be your guide. So have you seen the Galloping Gourmet? Do you love it? I, as soon as I saw it, that's when all of this 70s and food and retro and everything really clicked. It's something clicked in me. We all have our superpowers. This happened to be mine and I just found it, at, I don't know, maybe it was like seven or eight years old when it was in, but I, my, you know, my mother watched it, so I watched it. And I was just, just blown away, just blown away. And that's when my whole food journey started. And that's when I started reading cookbooks and menus, like people read books and just, I'm just absolutely fascinated with food and where it comes from and the stories behind it. So hopefully you are too. All right, so now we do call it hot cracker crab for a reason. I have a half a cup of just straight up saltines, all just finely, finely crushed up. And honestly, I used one of the wine bottles back there to crush them up. It's just put them in a paper towel, roll the wine bottle, have a sip. Whoa! <laughs> and it's all good. And you're going to end with a quarter cup of half and half. Yes, this is not a diet dish. But then again, in the 70s, a lot of them weren't. So, um, Graham Care actually, none of the things he made were healthy. He actually put fat into meat. He used the cream, the butter, everything bad. Um, Graham is 82 now. He's written 31 cookbooks. And he actually switched over to a very healthy lifestyle shortly after um, he lost his wife, who um, passed away right before their 60th anniversary. Um, but now he's, you know, he's living, I think he lives in New York, is that right? Anyway, um, he's still, he's still cooking. He, he doesn't have a show anymore. He's more reserved, but he's all about healthy and, you know, proper eating. But like I said, every once in a while, it's okay. Just don't eat this stuff every day. And this is actually a wonderful company dish. So we've got everything all warmed up and happy. Now I'm gonna turn this off and flip and get my casserole dish. I'll be right back. Mm. Caught me, sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Okay, so I have a casserole dish. Let's move this out of the way so you can see it because this is from the 70s and it's gorgeous. Let me just make it, yep. Now, Pam cooking spray was invented in 1961, so we're fine. I completely covered this casserole dish with cooking spray. I use the straight up canola, you can use whatever you like. And then pretty much what you do is you put your hot cracker crab right into the casserole. Or any, any dish you like. But you know, retro. So we gotta go retro. So we're gonna take our casserole. We're gonna pop it in an oven at 350 for 25 minutes. Oh, I forgot something really important. Before we do that, 
You're gonna want a quarter cup of more of cracker crumbs and sprinkle those all around the top. Yeah, we don't wanna forget this part. This is important. This is the reason we call it cracker crab. And then two tablespoons of melted butter. Literally this whole recipe is one stick of butter. Two tablespoons and then the rest gets melted and put into the mix. And we'll just drizzle that all around the top. And now we're gonna put it in the oven for 25 minutes and I will be right back. Okay, it's been 25 minutes and we are back and look at this. Look at that, the butter is bubbly, the crackers are all brown and it just smells so good in here. The Galloping Gourmet recommends that you serve this with a salad and white wine. I'm a red wine drinker, so I'm gonna stick with this, but that would be like the perfect appetizer. And it's just, it's just lovely. I've got my very happy martini plate. Get a little thing. And so while I'm serving a little bit of this up, look at that, brown, it's gorgeous. So you just put a little bit there, put your salad here, and you are so golden for a very impressive appetizer for company, or just while you're home. This is really easy to make. So what's your favorite thing about the 70s? I have lists and lists and lists, but clearly the food is what I love the most. I'd love to hear from you. What do you like? Oh, I almost forgot, we can fix this. You want about a tablespoon of finely chopped parsley because you do want a little color on here. So we're gonna pretend like I didn't scoop it out and we're gonna add, you don't need to use it all, just use until it looks right. And then put a little fresh right here. And there you go. So I am on a mission to make the 70s groovy again. Actually, really all of retro groovy again. And clearly, I do it through my dishes because it's fun to learn about the past this way. So anyway, I just want to end with a toast to Mr. Graham Kerr. Thank you so much for inspiring my life more than you could ever imagine because clearly you don't even know who I am. Now, if you like this recipe from the 70s, I have two other 70s appetizers ready to go for you. Just click away and enjoy. Go have yourself a 70s cocktail party or just a plain old cocktail party. These appetizers will work no matter what. So, have a great day, have a great night, and remember, history has never tasted so good.